again and welcome to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. I'm your host, certified sex therapist Lori Watson, author of Wanting Sex Again and blogger at Psychology Today and WebMD. And I have with me Dr. Adam Matthews, my co-host, who's a couples therapist, psychotherapist, and president of NCAMFT. Foreplay is dedicated to helping couples keep it hot. Each episode, we cover an aspect of sex that impacts your sex life and something that you can relate to. So if you find our discussions helpful, please give us a review on iTunes or Stitcher. We would love it if you would tell a friend about us. You can find us also on the web at foreplayrst.com. And if you have a comment or a topic that you'd like us to talk about, we'd love to hear from you. Please send them to us at info at foreplayrst.com. Thanks for listening. Now on to today's topic. Today, we're going to talk about the sexual connection when your partner's away. I mean, there's a lot of ways our partners go away from us. I mean, sometimes traveling. When we were young, married, my husband traveled six days a week. And he traveled only twice a month, but he traveled Wednesday through Monday. So he was gone a lot during this, you know, to me, the the weekend when all your girlfriends and stuff are busy with their families. It was a really lonely time for me. Sure. I kind of felt like I had about four days where I retained our relationship, you know. Yeah. It's like I missed him terribly. Then the next day I was kind of irritated with him. By the third day I was like in longing. The fourth (laughs) day, you know, he's dead to me. You know, I'm just like I I lose that connection from him after so many days. I've gotten a little bit better now than four days, but – yeah, but there's there's also other times where maybe you just work really different schedules. Yeah. Uh, I, well, it happened to me too. I have clients who've been in school, like real intense school. And when I was uh, getting my doctorate, that was the case a lot where I was mm. just studying a whole lot and there were some night classes. And so uh, yeah. we just miss each other sometimes for, for days at a time right. where our schedules are just completely different. So I think we're talking about that too. When that that creates some of the same thing, you're just alone a lot more than maybe you anticipated when you got into the relationship. Right. right? And I, I think for people who rely on a sense of constancy mm-hmm. and the ability to literally be in touch with their partner, these long absences can really be disruptive to their intimate life, their yeah. sex life. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because when are they going to do it? The time becomes really limited, right? Right. Like one client I have, you know, there's like a turnaround of a couple days, you mm-hmm. know, and for that person, you know, they want to have sex. Yeah. You know, that that's how they get connected. Whereas their partner is like, I haven't seen you in three days and I've been with the kids these last three days and, you know, I'm burnt out or six days yeah. or whatever it is. And, you know, I don't have any... I don't have any space to then be sexual too. Yeah. It puts a lot of pressure on that time too. Mm-hmm. If that's the only if you only have a couple of days turnaround time to have sex. And especially if you've got kids who oh, may, yeah. you need the other parent as well, right? That's right. Well, and, and we've really I've had in. some I've had couples who like you're saying one partner's been with the kids for days on end, days mm-hmm. straight. And then what they need when they come in is for their partner to take the kids and for them to go <laughs> for them to go away. Right. For they need a they need a, a break and a break. rest. How do they juggle that with where's the couple time? Yeah. You know, where's the sex time? Where's the time? sex time? Yeah. Yeah. It's a rough pattern. Yeah. And I think then like the pressure then, wouldn't you say, because it heightens everything, fights start to happen more and they start fighting over those needs, like the need for, then there's also a need a lot of times for friend time that hasn't mm-hmm. happened. And autonomous time. Autonomous time. And, 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 and often the person left at home feels like, well, yeah, but you got to go out, you got to dress up, you got to go to nice restaurants, you got to be with your colleagues, Mm. and I've been stuck at home maybe doing just the same old, same old. I I don't get that kind of break. I've been taking care of the dogs or the children or whatever. Yeah. Then the fight becomes about which one of those needs do we prioritize, Mm -hmm. right? Exactly. And a lot of times, sex is the one that gets the short end. That gets shoved. Yeah, that gets shoved to the end because it seems... It's not the most pressing at times or doesn't maybe doesn't feel as the most pressing. I will say, you know, I listened to a young couple who was just so stressed out this week. And, you know, their life really was stressful. You know, there are certain phases of life that, especially when you have young children, that it's not in your imagination. It really yeah. is stressful. It, there really isn't that much time. You know, and I think maybe the more sexual partner says, yeah, but, you know, all we need is, I think somebody said this week, 11 minutes. We only need 11 <laughs> minutes and we're good. That's such, that's <laughs> and she was all about that, too, though, I will yeah. say. He wasn't just being selfish. She was all about, yeah, you're right. It's only 11 minutes. Yeah. But they couldn't find the space to do it. Yeah. Because their life was so crowded. Yeah. It just There were so many things going on that they couldn't. Mm-hmm. 
they didn't say no to something to be able to say That's yes right. to sex. That's right. I mean, some of it too, I think, is realizing how important this aspect of the relationship mm-hmm. is and realizing that if I don't have undivided attention for five hours, let's say, you know, a, an evening out, I'm not going to feel sexual. Like, I need to catch up with my partner. I yeah. need to catch up with myself. How can you – people don't plan that. They have to structure that. Yeah. Especially, I think, wh- one thing that's crazy for me is my husband traveled for years, and we didn't really structure it very well. Like, knowing the conflicts that we would regularly get into, mm-hmm. we didn't necessarily, like, revamp – our priorities to say, okay, look at, you know, you come home first day and a half, you're all about the kids, you know, and that's my expectation. And maybe we have, you know, meals made so that I'm not going crazy or something. Mm. And I take a little break, you take the kids and I get out. And, and then we have, you know, a a half day of couple time where we just get out because Mm. yeah, you're going back on the road and yeah, the kids need you. But if the parents are not strong together, you know, then they're not going to be strong. They they don't have anything left to give to the children. So they need to have that time away. Listen, Laura, you are speaking my language right now. Yeah. Like, I mean, I think that's one of the things that I talk more to couples than anything else that I think is such a simple but not simple fix, right? Mm-hmm. It is being intentional about your time and saying and valuing your relationship as well as all the other things that you value, Mm -hmm. right? You're giving time to all these other things. And there's two places where you're going to find where you value your time and where your priorities are, what you give your time to and what you give your money to. That's right. You know? Mm -hmm. And so when we say, oh, date night's too expensive, Oh. Or we say, you know, Divorce going out, there's, expensive. there's, other, <laughs> that's right. Let's keep that, keep that in mind when you don't want to spend a hundred dollars on an evening. Compare. That's right. But attorneys are like, really? They're like $300 an hour. That's right. Yeah. And I think when you're saying there's other things that you're giving your time to, other things you're giving your money to, you're saying that your relationship is not as important as those things. That's right. That's um, right. And, and so, I mean, I, I really feel for that and remember that time of life that it was just so stressful. You know, and I don't think I did as good a job as I could have done, honestly, about structuring it. But now, force for the trees, looking back and looking at the young couples that I see, it really is possible to have, you know, all of that work together. Yeah. Yeah. And part of that, I think, is the other part when we talk about the sex part as well is, you know, and this is this is age all. This is classic. Right. It's not wanting to schedule sex. It's not wanting sex to feel like that there's a specific sex night that we're having or that it's, we want it to be spontaneous. And for couples, when they don't see each other, that spontaneity time to be able to be spontaneous really shrinks. It does. It? it does. And I think of it more as planning than scheduling. I mean, when we're yeah. dating, there's a ton of planning that goes into That's getting right. into bed. Yeah. I mean, you, you plan what you're going to wear. You plan where you're going to go. You research date nights. You plan creative things. Yeah. You know, you plan to clear your schedule of all sorts of commitments so that you can have a sleep in morning and have wild sex. I mean, there's a great deal of planning. It's a myth, I think, that somehow or another that was spontaneous and this yeah. is, you know. It's not is, as spontaneous as you think it was. It's not as spontaneous, yeah. right? It's yeah. it's a priority. Yeah. They say there is a ton of time for each other when we're dating and there's a ton of time for sexual intimacy when we're dating. And they, you know, certainly they don't have as many obligations. That's true. But many people are dating and they're both working, if not having some children, and they make it work. And I would say people who have affairs, like, boom, done. Yeah. You know, they make time. That's you right. You know, they, they plan it, they move it, and, and you can do it. Yeah. And I think it's so important to keep that connection, both sexually and emotionally, alive by planning for time for it, yeah. acknowledging your need. And listen, like I think a lot of people, a lot of my couples, I, I clarify with them, we're not talking about necessarily an every week thing if your schedule doesn't allow for an every week thing. But I mm-hmm. think it does have to be regular and consistent mm-hmm. in a way that fits your schedule. If it's every other week, it's every other week. If it's once a month and you're taking a whole weekend a month and that's what you're you know, allowed, then it's a one week in a month that you have to look forward to. I knew a therapist when I was a young therapist who said that she and her husband took a weekend a month mm-hmm. away. Like he had a big job, she had a big practice, and she was like, yep, you know, every, I said, you know, I can go, I can roll with your big job and I can roll with my big job. And they had kids, but they hired help. They hired a yeah. nanny. And they said, but we have to get away at least once a month, you know, for a whole weekend. Yeah. 
And that, w- that was what fed them and nurtured them to keep going on these big jobs and managing their lives so that they stayed connected. And to stay in the relationship too, right? Yeah. I mean, I think you said it. I mean, I think if you're not doing these things, affairs, there's increasing that likelihood that that's a possibility, especially when you're traveling and you're not as connected exactly. um, in time and space. Yeah. And I think we should talk about the special difficulties with travel mm. that are associated with actually being apart versus... Yep your partner coming home every night, even if they're busy. I think there are often fears that get fed with that particular lifestyle. So you're listening to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy with sex therapist Lori Watson and couples therapist Dr. Adam Matthews. We will be right back to talk about the particular pitfalls of having a partner who travels. Wanting Sex Again, How to Rediscover Desire and Heal a Sexless Marriage by Certified Sex Therapist Lori Watson. Each chapter is designed to fix one of the problems that cause low libido from early marriage through the childbearing years, even all the way through menopause. I've also had men read it and tell me that for them, it was the most hopeful thing they read about resolving sexual problems. Look for Wanting Sex Again on Amazon.com. You can also talk to Lori Watson for therapy in person or via Skype. I offer couples counseling and sex therapy, and I think about both aspects of the relationship, emotional intimacy and sexual technique and that combination together helps marriages be happy improve your sex and improve your relationship with awakening center for couples and intimacy find out more at awakenloveandsex.com and sign up for their next couples retreat weekend hosted by Lori watson awakenloveandsex.com awaken what's possible It is one of my great joys in life to be able to really help individuals and couples find strength in their relationships and really find hope again. Licensed marriage and family therapist, Dr. Adam Matthews from Matthews Counseling. I work with a wide variety of issues, including depression and anxiety, marital issues, issues with adolescence. I believe that therapy should be designed around you, that it should be personalized to who you are and to your unique situation. Therapy is available in office, online, and by phone. I want therapy to be comfortable for everyone. At our office, you'll find that we sit around a fireplace in deep, comfortable chairs, look at the problem differently, and offer practical solutions for you to take home and utilize outside of the therapy room. Schedule today and rediscover hope. You can find me on the web at matthewscounseling.net. Matthews with one T. You can contact us through email or phone and find a lot of resources on our website, matthewscounseling.net. Welcome back to Foreplay Radio Sex Therapy. Today's episode, we're talking about the difficulties that happen when one partner travels and how that impacts the sexual life in the coupleship. So, Adam, you brought up right before we took a break on, you know, the the fears that can emerge when your partner is not in your bed at night. Those are can be some really real fears that kind of are just speaking to you in the absence of having somebody there because you don't know what they're doing, you know, and I don't think we're just talking about fears of stepping outside of the relationship, even though I think those are there. Mm-hmm. Right. Those those can be present when you don't know what your partner is doing, especially if they have a business where they do a lot of business at the bar or they do a lot of business on like the golf a course. Of, yeah, or they entertaining like, and there's stuff a lot like of entertaining that. that happens in their business or they're just around a bunch of people and they're out there on their own. I think it can also be fears about just that lost connection mm-hmm. that, you know, that we're losing that connection and we don't know when we're going to get that back or how are we going to mm-hmm. maintain this pace if it's if we've been doing it for a while. There's just a ton of things, yeah. a ton of fears that can go on. And, and, and I think about the, 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 there. the sexual sort of types, right? If you're a sexual pursuer mm-hmm. and you are, your partner is gone, you know, you really feel the losses yeah. of, okay, my sexual needs with my partner cannot be met. I mean, certainly you can be by yourself, and that's not a bad strategy during those times right. uh, when it's physically impossible to be together just to keep sort of the at bay that sexual need. Mm-hmm. But I think many of us want to be sexual with our partner, and so if they're out of sight, there is this immediate sense of kind of suffocation. Okay, my sexual needs are not going to be met yeah. for six days. Or if you're the one traveling – 
you know, not necessarily just the one left, but you're the one traveling and you're thinking, okay, this means six days Mm -hmm. that I don't get to have sex with my partner. That's kind of a tough thing to look forward to, you know, and and then to think if you come back into the relationship and your partner isn't there with open arms and ready for sex, it's a huge disappointment. I've been I've been away. I've been turning down all temptation and I come back to you and you're fried and burnt out and don't want to be sexual with me. It's it's a downer. It's oh, a bummer. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I think it creates this again this this pressure of when is this going to happen? It puts a lot of need then for the couple to be connecting in different ways while they are apart. Right. Yeah. It makes that yeah. it makes those text messages, those phone calls, emails just much more important in the ways that they stay connected emotionally and those, those during could the, when they're apart. Be sexual oh, sure. as well, right? Yeah. I mean you could have phone sex while your partner's gone. Yeah. That, that could be fun and exciting and also sort of make them feel connected and tide them over. Yeah. Um, but I think the difficulties that I see most typically that present are maybe the one partner who needs contact an emotional connection to feel sexual and the other yeah. person who needs sex to be connected as we All always right. talk about that split. But, you know, maybe he's traveling and he needs sex to feel connected and she's like, you know, you're not home. I worked all day. came home to the kids. You know, I'm fried. No, I don't want to have phone sex with you because I want to go to sleep, you yeah. know, or, or whatever. And so she doesn't, you know, somehow or another, I think that they need to plan, like r- need to recognize that this need goes unfulfilled for a period mm-hmm. of times regularly. Yeah. So how can they solve this, you know, putting their brains together to make it happen? And that goes back to just talking about what their needs are, right? Mm-hmm. I think there's for those that need. But you make it sound easy, Adam. I, I mean, do. I'm if making the guy it sound easy. is like, if the guy is way more sexual than his female partner, you know, and he's like, okay, you know, I like sex three days a week, and I'm gone six. Yeah. You know, that means Friday and Saturday, and you know, before I leave for the airport, I'm hoping for sex, and right. you know, just to get tied it over. So which yeah. part? Which part but, of that am I making sound but easy? But that's <laughs> easy to say. He should talk about his needs, but oh, what if she's like? Part. You know, not interested in that. I'm like w- way too full for that. Yeah. I think there's some basics there that they have to talk about. What are, what are they doing while they're mm-hmm. gone? Right. I had a couple who was traveling and their conversations always revolved around what the kids were doing. Uh, yeah. You know? And so there wasn't even this kind of basic friendship that was happening when they were apart, talking mm-hmm. about what was going on with them, talking about their frustrations and their mm-hmm. their joys throughout the day. That didn't mm-hmm. establish this basic friendship that would make them willing if one of them was resistant to phone sex or to sexy text messages or whatever, yeah. that would make them willing to do that. That kind of basic intimacy it, wasn't going easy. on. It, that's easy, right? It's an easy trap to get caught up sure, in. Sure, yeah. I mean, you both love your children. It's easy to talk about. It's not as often as conflictual. Yeah. So that's an easy trap to get in to center not just those conversations, but every kind yeah. of time into the children. Or to not plan it outright. They're on, they may be traveling on different coasts where their time zones oh, are really yeah. different. That is tough. You know, even if they don't have kids, then the temptation might be, well, I'm, I'm too tired. I know it's only 5 o'clock for you, but it's 10 o'clock here. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I'm wiped out from working all day myself. And so they just don't put the, it, they don't put it, the effort in. I think traveling is a huge stressor. Oh, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Just all those things you said, having that I've lived with a person who travels. Yeah. You know, in the it's past, it was just like, up. woo, yeah. that was stressful. I mean, for a while, he traveled to China, and, you know, uh-huh. that's a 12-hour difference. The good thing was there, exactly 12 hours actually worked out you yeah. know, because 7, his time was 7 a.m., my time or whatever. Yeah. You know, so it was perfect. We could talk to each other. But the three-hour difference I found to be more stressful. Yeah. So I'm not trying to make it sound easy, but I think, like, the effort to talk about what you can do to stay connected mm-hmm. while you're apart – so certainly the questions that could mm-hmm. orient more toward how are you doing? Yeah. I know you told me how the kids are doing, but how are you doing, hon? Or, yeah. you know, tell me what happened in the meeting. I, I think being interested in each other's lives is so crucial. You know, some people say, yeah, but, you know, I can't keep track of all his accounts and stuff like that. And I think, you know, I keep track of a lot of people on a weekly basis, Mm -hmm. you know, with my clients. And I do do it with notes. That helps me. But I just don't think there's anything wrong with keeping an index card in the kitchen drawer that you write down the names of your partner's clients or, 
you know, what the next project is called or something so that you can like track, Yeah. you know, because it is it is kind of confusing when you're not doing that. But keeping track of it or, you know, the person who's staying at home and and the partner says, you know, I have no idea when the children go to the dentist or Mm -hmm. that it was a big a doctor's appointment this time or they were getting their shots. And it's like they should know that. Right. They should care enough about the other person's world to stay connected. A way around that, too, is just to ask questions. I'm just surprised by how many people don't just ask questions in conversation Uh with their partner so that if you don't know what they're talking about, you just like, remind me of that again. I know you you might have told me about that, but tell me again what it is. Tell me more about that client. Why was that frustrating for you? And just Mm -hmm. to be, I don't think you can underestimate the art of being curious with your partner and just being interested. Interest is sexy. Yeah, absolutely. Totally sexy. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. My husband and I have started asking each other, What's the deepest thing going on with you right now? Mm. You know, so that we kind of cut past how are you feeling about the bills or the kids or mm. what's going on in your work, but just like what's going on in you? Yeah. I mean, I'm really interested in that question. Like I, I want to know yeah, what's sure. he struggling with? What's he thinking about? Where Where is he going? Yeah. I mean, that just that just drives intimacy, right? And that's going to just mm-hmm. – Those types of interests are just going to make it to where you can move easier back into a sexual relationship when you're when you're together. Right. Right, right. I mean, that's just going to make those two days. It's going to make it much more possible when you when you don't have to spend a lot of time reestablishing that emotional connection. And and I think that, you know, maintaining some flirtation while your partner's gone, a, a sext. Yeah. You know, a, a hot picture yeah. you know, or phone sex or something that is somewhat fun and flirty and reminding you of each other in terms of how you are with as sexual partners yeah. could be fun. And I think even, you know, you tell me what you think about this, but I would think even minimally like anticipating the sex that's going to come when you're back together. Exactly. Right. And talking about that and talking about being excited about that and, you know, just anticipating that with each, together rather than just it, it existing in one partner's head mm-hmm. um, about the time they're going to spend when they're able to get back together. And I would speak to the, the low desire partner in this. Like, let's say, you know, you're going to have sex on Saturday night. Your husband comes home on Friday late and you know, sex is expected on Saturday mm. night, but you don't feel it. It's like what you said, Adam, of how can you get yourself to feel it? How can you anticipate it? If you know you're going to do it, mm-hmm. you know, you know you're going to do it anyway. Why not set it up optimally for yourself so that it's the best experience possible through, you know, using your imagination or finding a creative way to do it or knowing, okay, these are my optimal circumstances. I need four hours by myself. So you say, look at you got to take the kids, you know, mm. or I need autonomy. I have been working all week too, but I need to get away. I need to go see my girlfriends. I need to go for a run. Yeah. You know, I need to go to the gym. I need to go meditate and yeah, just and be something. at peace for a little bit. Yeah. I can't be with you even though we haven't been together. I need some autonomy in order to rejuvenate. You know, and I need connection time, so we need to spend another four hours together. Let's go for a long walk. Let's go out to dinner and talk and and then think about sex. Yeah. And I think the, all of that requires you to say no to something. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it requires a little bit of sacrifice. It right? does. And I think, again, though, that it's prioritizing your relationship over something else. And it doesn't mean that that thing would never happen or it can never happen. But I think when you – things could fill up our calendars. People are so busy every these days. Day. They're do, they're involved every. in everything. And, I mean, I talked to some parents who really – their children were involved in like eight things. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was academic. There was an academic enrichment. There was piano. I mean, there that's, was sports. That's every night, right? That was – I mean, eight things over the course – they had two kids, and they were involved in like eight different activities. I'm like, they were short on money, and they had no time for each other? Are, are you kidding? Yep. Like, really, do you really think that giving your children th- this enrichment is the best thing for them versus giving them a family yeah. that stays together? You don't know that people recognize the danger of that. Right. Right. Especially when they're going that quickly, because those things, they may not have started off with that many activities, because we're not saying that activity is bad. Like, no. academic enrichment no. is not a bad thing, but it's going to come at the expense of your relationship. But I think your, your point was so much can crowd out That's the right. relationship, the price of of the relationship can't be paid because it's too high. And it makes intentionality that much more important for you to to carve out time together. Right. And so traveling, we recognize the special difficulties, but we do think that you need to think about it clearly, especially when there is a pattern of fights or a pattern of frustrations. That means something needs to be resolved. 
And usually, the, I mean, I can almost always find that. Mm-hmm. I, as a therapist, I can almost always find the way they could resolve it. So if I can find it, you can find it. We wish you luck. We know it's difficult. Hang in there. Yeah, uh, you're listening to Four Play Radio Sex Therapy with Lori Watson and Dr. Adam Matthews. Hey, help us stay on top here at Foreplay. We'd love it if you would subscribe and share it with your friends. And please take one sec and rate and review us. Thanks so much. 